This is the ancient Valley of the Rhine, one of the world's most vital centers of civilization, where European history has evolved through centuries of warfare and strife, and where art, literature, and viticulture have been nurtured and developed for more than 2,000 years. We are now in that part of this historic region where the less spectacular Moselle River forms a picturesque confluence with the swift flowing Rhine. For over 700 miles from its source in the mountains of Switzerland and Austria to its estuary in the North Sea, the Rhine flows like an artery of life through the most densely populated areas of Europe, including Cologne, queen of the Rhineland and hub of Western Germany, founded 50 years after the birth of Christ. The gray atmosphere which now hangs over Cologne acts as an appropriate shroud for a city which has not yet rid itself of the scars of war. Almost two thirds of this historic metropolis was pulverized by bombs, but fortunately the bombers took particular care to save the ancient and world famous Cathedral of Cologne. The building of this great Gothic shrine was begun in 1248 and after 652 years of intermittent construction, it was finally completed. The Rhine has been one of the chief waterways of Europe since the beginning of time, and it still serves as a natural outlet for Germany, Belgium, and Holland. About 16 miles southeast of Cologne lies Bonn, the federal capital of Western Germany, which has always played an important part in the development of European culture. Among its most notable sons was Ludwig van Beethoven, the famous composer who was born in this house on December 16, 1770. Since Beethoven's death in 1827, it is estimated that over a million visitors have crossed the threshold of this humble little house and climbed the stairs to the tiny attic room in which he was born. Continuing our journey along the Rhine, we visit the city of Koblenz, formerly a Roman fortress, founded in the year of 9 AD, and now a thriving metropolis with about 100,000 inhabitants. Because of its strategic position at the confluence of the Rhine and Moselle rivers, Koblenz has always been a natural military target, and it was also heavily bombed during World War II. The spirit of the people, however, has been indestructible, and its present revival now manifests itself most pleasantly at the local wine garden. This colorful wine garden is a community affair which is supported by a number of vintners who have their choice brands on sale. And now let's meet Augustine, the Burgomeister, who happens to be the conductor of the band. But all is not merriment in this realm of Bacchus, where there is much work to be done, and most of it is naturally devoted to the cultivation of grapes. This unique system is used in the vineyards around Rüdesheim. A hose is attached to a large truck which pumps chemically treated water into pipes feeding several sprinklers that are manipulated by groups of workers who travel from vineyard to vineyard. Most of the workers live in quaint little villages like this, which have changed but little since the faraway days when powerful barons lived in formidable castles overlooking the Rhine and exacted vintner fees from their tenants. The barons have long since departed but their castles still stand, and many of them are for rent at very reasonable prices. 
In all the world, there is no greater travel thrill than a boat trip on the Rhine. first planted grapes along the Rhine in the second century AD. And today, every available foot of land from the water to the skyline has been utilized by the vineyards. Our historic reverie is suddenly interrupted by the appearance of a boat, which we are told was used by Adolf Hitler for his personal sightseeing tours. And it still serves the same purpose, except the sightseers in this case are American soldiers on holiday and Uncle Sam is the host. Verily, times have changed in this venerable valley of the Rhine. About four-fifths of the river traffic is made up of fuels, ores, and cereals. Perhaps the best known of the Rhine legends is the one about the Lorelei, or the beautiful maiden who jumped off this promontory and drowned herself in despair over a faithless lover. The siren-like spirit of the Lorelei is said to haunt this region and the echo of her voice often lures passing boatmen to destruction. The Rhine has also been a source of inspiration to men of genius who have glorified it with poetry and song. Foremost among them was Richard Wagner, who based many of his operas on legends of the Rhineland. <laughs> And so it is today along the beautiful valley of the Rhine, where the records of human endeavor have been picturesquely established in the vineyards, the castles, and the villages. May peace stay with them now and forever. And it is with this thought that we say farewell to the people who live in the ancient valley of the Rhine.